All right, hi everyone. Biogen version 10 is finally in development. Recently, you may be aware that I did a bit of a change in policy where my Patreon income has effectively become my wage to work on free projects. It's my way of justifying the time of working on free things without getting much back. And in the previous video, I kind of explained the thought process behind what it's like going back to old projects which have a high degree of complexity, such as add-ons like Biogen, and what that entails. So what I've done is I spent the full four hours that people have paid for this month working on Biogen. But sadly, and this is something that I mentioned in that video, nothing really has changed from the user experience side of things. So what we're looking at here is on the new documentation site, I've done Patreon Fund July 2025. It's a log of every single thought that went through my head while working on Biogen. And I do mean like every single thought. What I did was I had a proper look through the code, reassessed the interface, and then ultimately decided that the way importing geometry nodes content in Biogen works could be simplified. Now, for those of you that don't know, Biogen is an add-on to assist with generative modeling in Blender. It was originally created before Geometry Nodes was a thing, and at this point the publicly released version, version 9.2, has a variety of content that you can just quick apply to objects to get interesting results. This is not a very good example, but it allows for all sorts of different complex import types, where if you have like a content pack in Blender where you've got objects which have complex modifier stacks of multiple modifiers and multiple Geometry Nodes, and even if those Geometry Nodes have object references that need to be filled up, let's say that each of the tree has a different input that requires being referenced to the target object, it can do that automatically. Even if there are cases where the effect needs to also separately import a collection, it can do that for you as well. There's also weight painting, although I will say the weight painting is broken, so that's one thing that needs to be fixed because that's changed with API changes. I also had a paid pack where I was experimenting with artistic content uh, called the Generators Lab. Anyway, I noticed that the actual code for importing and applying these effects, they all had a lot of similarities, but just certain differences in them that made them not clear enough to do all in one function. So what I spent a lot of the four hours doing was A, relearning all of my code, which was quite interesting actually. I clicked onto it better than I expected to. I thought it might be quite a big hurdle kind of going back in and refiguring out how everything works. I then took all of the different types of import and application methods for taking geometry nodes from one object to another. I looked at everywhere the methods were similar and then everywhere where they were different and decided, okay, here's an area where we could do a function with like a different argument to create a different outcome and then I looked at different conventions. So for example, in Biogen, if there's content that's got, let me just check this, a G at the beginning of the name, it's a very complex effect that spans multiple geometry nodes trees and requires multiple references. In this case, I've just imported this template object from the generators lab content pack. You see that we got two different geometry nodes trees in here. Oh, my head is in the way. And both of them have this kind of object input. Whenever this effect is applied to any object with Biogen, it auto assigns that target to the one we had selected. But this is a G type. And I thought, why G? What does G stand for? For surely something like T for target because we're choosing target objects would be good. Now then as I looked through the code more and more, I discovered, well, actually there's several slightly different types of this importing. So we've got targets where if you apply the effect to the object, it does copy the modifier stack to that own object and then references itself in those objects. So I call that target self. But then there's a slightly different version where once Blender imports that geometry nodes content, but keeps the object imported to carry that information, uses that to generate the effect for the user and then hides the original originally selected object out of view. So it's like, okay, that's actually slightly different. So maybe I'll call that TR for target remote because the source is actually a remote object that time. And so what I was doing was trying to decipher all of the slightly different methods of functionality that I came up with and condense them into different import modes. And I've come up with four, which are S, C, TR, and TS. S is for simple geometry nodes that don't require the imports of anything else like collections. And that can also support things like weight painting. C is for geometry nodes. So again, just geometry node trees that also require the import of a collection to be properly assigned. TR is for bringing in an entire modifier stack, including all geometry nodes trees, but where the originally selected object is kept as a separate remote target that's hidden from view. So effectively, we're creating a new object with that effect. And TS is similar, but in this case, we're bringing in the entire modifier stack with all the modifiers in geometry nodes trees, but we're applying it directly to the originally selected object and assigning references to self. Um, you might think, well, what's the difference between doing it remote and doing it separate. 
well, you might want to do a remote effect where it's impractical to edit the original source object. Some geometry nodes effects are complex and you can disable them in the view, but let's say you're doing it on a sculpted object. You might find it impractical to sculpt on an object that's got geometry nodes applied to it. Whereas if you had that sculpt object as a source input elsewhere, or it doesn't have any modifiers applied, active, whatever, it's easier to edit that separately. So I'm also going through now and I've drafted up a new function for managing all of these import types. It has not been tested because I ran out of time. I'm also updating all of the content to match this new convention. And then the next phase is basically to start testing that. But I did run out of time. I used up the full four hours and went a little bit over as well. But like I said, every single thought in this work process is logged on the documentation. So you can go through and read it. And you know, you might be a bit mad to, but if you wanted, you could actually look at the code and follow along with the full process. But ultimately, I'm at this phase now where now I've relearned how the Biogen code works. In effect, I'm worried that by the time next month comes around and I, you know, take the Patreon fund and use that to do extra work that I might not remember things exactly as I do now. But I kind of want to stick to this philosophy because it's a good way to kind of protect my time. Sadly though, there's been nothing like tangible that you can get your hands on. And I mentioned this in the last video as well, that when it comes to working on add-on projects, a lot of time can go by without anything tangibly changing, like on the user experience level. But this will make things much easier to edit in the future and to build upon. So I think it's an important step. But if you want to help me, if you want to help add more time to the monthly work fund, then please consider signing up on the Patreon. You can also sign up for free for updates, but obviously signing up for free does not increase the wage. So now we have to wait until next month before I try testing that function and then we can, you know, keep going with updating the content. So according to my own rules, now I need to move on to something else, most likely one of the upcoming paid projects or updates. So yeah, thanks for watching everyone. If you made it this far through the video, put a work related emoji in the comments, like I know a hammer or a spanner or something, so I can see if you made it this far. Stay safe and I'll see you next time.